statistic that I saw that really drove me to this was that it, in the U.S. alone, uh, drug, drug interactions causing uh, death uh, account, is somewhere around the fourth or fifth leading cause of death in the U.S. Something that potentially should be preventable by knowing more about how drugs interact with the body. It could be preventable by eliminating bad drugs that are toxic earlier and then it's never getting to the patient. We know it's a problem, so how do we overcome it? So I'm John Dordick, I'm the director of the Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And this is an area that's attracted a lot of attention for my purposes because we're quite interested in trying to understand how do we better develop a drug? How do we develop a drug that is better and safer? Here you can see. Well, drug testing is very complicated. Uh, it's a, it's a nonlinear process, but uh, one of the biggest uh, hurdles that the drug companies have to deal with is that towards the end of the process, before it goes into the human, it goes into the animal. And uh, it's become pretty clear that mu much of the results, not all, but many of the results that one gets in an animal uh, don't really correlate well to the, to the human. So one has to question why use the animal. And so what we've done uh, is we've taken cells from the body, uh, we encapsulate them in a three-dimensional matrix, and literally spot them onto a slide. We've been looking at a number of ways to use biocatalysis, coupled with other things like human cell culture, to be able to develop very high throughput approaches where we can spot individual human cells and be able to tell very quickly whether or not a drug is active or a drug candidate is active, whether or not it's toxic, and to do that in a very high throughput manner using simple biochips. In fact, the technology to spot them is essentially the same that inkjet printers use, uh, where you can have little spots come out of an inkjet. And then we have to test it, and we have to ask the question, are we getting results that would really do mimic the human body? Uh, we haven't overcome it completely yet. Uh, nobody has. Uh, but we're getting closer. And if we get to the point where we're close enough, then we're going to be in a position to know what's going to happen, not only to humans, but maybe even to individuals. And so real personalized medicine. Kind of what I was raised before is, well, what are we going to do other than that? Small molecule antivirals have not been really very effective, although with HIV it's been stunningly effective, but for most viruses. Fundamentally, you've got something that's, that has its own agenda, right? I want to live, I'm going to reproduce, and I want, you're saying, I just want you to make as much of this enzyme as possible. So you've always got this, this pull with the organism. So if this technology comes to the marketplace, and I think we're not far from that, it's going to reduce the cost of drugs, which is going to reduce the cost to the, to the patient. Uh, it's going to generate better drugs, which is going to reduce the number of uh, adverse drug reactions uh, to the patient, which is going to drop dramatically the number of people who are harmed or perhaps killed uh, by drug, drug toxicity. Uh, at the end of the day, everyone benefits. The patients benefit, the pharmaceutical companies benefit, uh, and uh, of course the animals benefit because they're not sacrificed for this. Uh, and it streamlines the whole process. And I think that's going to have the biggest impact on society.